Tropical forests harbor about half of all species on Earth. They also contain much of our planet's carbon, and they strongly regulate our climate system. Scientists and conservationists have long acknowledged the unique role of tropical forests, working for improved management and protection of these vital regions. Although we can celebrate success in protecting some forests, problems of deforestation and degradation persist, and the loss of species continues at a rate that hasn't been experienced for millions of years. Climate change is also underway in tropical regions. For example, the ongoing 2010 drought involving six Amazonian countries may be pushing tropical forests to an ecological tipping point, requiring species to adapt, move, or die. Recent work by Greg Asner and colleagues shows that up to 55% of global human tropical forests could be negatively affected by a combination of climate and land use change by the year 2100. The ability to evaluate and sustain tropical forests extends far beyond reductions in deforestation. These regions must be managed in the face of a rapidly changing climate. Over the past 10 years, my lab at the Carnegie Institution's Department of Global Ecology has become a major contributor to tropical forest science and conservation at regional and global scales. Our efforts focus on building scientific knowledge and international technical capacity to monitor and combat deforestation, to tackle forest degradation, and to measure carbon emissions. Conservationists have long lists of endangered species, but no list can tell you the trajectory of change in an ecosystem or region. For that, you need the big picture view of the canopy while maintaining lots of ecological detail. To make better management decisions and to find a way to sustain tropical forests, we need to know when forces like degradation and climate change alter forest canopy health and diversity. We've been working to break a long-standing barrier to monitoring the health and diversity of tropical forest canopies, especially in relation to climate change. When I say health of the forest, I'm talking about the fundamentals, the physiology and chemistry of the canopy that makes the forest tick. Think of the canopy as the thread that weaves the entire forest, the water, the carbon, and all species together. We are pioneers in airborne ecological science. Our lab used airborne methods to map desertification in the Southwest US and Argentina. We were the first to map the chemical composition of forests in the Hawaiian Islands, which allowed us to detect invasive species that threaten native biodiversity. We recently mapped how different species, from termites to elephants, affect the ecology of African savannas. And in 2010, we were the first to do high-resolution mapping of carbon stored in tropical forests of Amazonia and Madagascar. These and other scientific advances were achieved following the development of the Carnegie Airborne Observatory, or CAO. The first system was launched November 2006, funded by the W.M. Keck Foundation and William Hurst III. The CAO is comprised of unique aircraft instrumentation that maps ecosystems in 3D, along with novel scientific methods to analyze the data. The CAO is also about the people involved, a cadre of dedicated scientists, engineers, and technicians funded by grants from government and private sources. Today, the CAO's capabilities center on forest carbon stocks, topography, and some vegetation chemistry. Occasionally, we are able to determine a species remotely, but breaking the barrier to a more general mapping of forest health and biodiversity rests in understanding the linkage between what we can measure from the air and the properties of the species found in the canopy. Canopy chemical properties are a window into mapping forest health and diversity. We needed a chance to develop the link between species, their chemical traits, and the spectral signatures we can measure from the air. In 2007, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation provided Asner's lab with an opportunity to advance the science required to make this link. The Spectronomics Project supports an ambitious field and laboratory research effort involving Carnegie staff, collaborators, and students from around the world. They work at two complementary geographic scales in the field. In the Western Amazon, home to the highest tree diversity on our planet, they utilize an extraordinary range of tropical habitats from lowland Amazonia to tree line in the Andes. We also developed a network of sites around the world, from Central America to the Pacific, from the Caribbean to Madagascar, Malaysia, and Australia. 
Each one is key to understanding the link between species and chemistry. We traveled to remote tropical forests, climbed into the canopy, collected samples, measured vital spectral properties, and prepared the samples in the field. My team is phenomenal. They don't just keep up with the project, they define it. We've worked in a huge number of forests, with conditions ranging from wonderful to ultra-challenging. From sea level to one forest found higher than 12,000 feet in the Andes. And we've used every technique you can imagine to get up into the tall canopies. From ropes to cranes to shotguns, even bows and arrows. Whatever it takes to get the samples down, we do. Today we've got nearly 10,000 specimens in hand and we're still going strong. Our team wasn't sure of its potential, but here we are just a few years later, and we have become world awareness doing field campaigns. Tree climbers, botanists, logistical experts, model lab specialists, we are all of this. We are creating the scientific knowledge needed for the conservation and forest management at the macro scale. And the fieldwork is only the beginning. Once those impossible canopy samples make the long, often challenging journey back to our lab at Carnegie, another well-organized team is ready to process and develop highly accurate chemical information. At our peak, we can process about 400 species per month for 23 chemical traits. That's rare in academia, and we've worked hard to develop a lab to deliver what the project demands. We've also developed the world's first frozen forest, a unique library of well-preserved plant samples maintained at ultra-low temperatures for future studies. The chemical, spectral, and taxonomic information goes to our data explorer on the Spectronomics website. We want to continue to build this one-of-a-kind resource. The scientific advances coming out of the Spectronomics project are even more impressive. They discovered that canopy trees often have unique combinations of chemical traits allowing for identification of species. In a forthcoming report, the team found that species could be classified to 90% accuracy using their chemical signatures. They also found that the chemical traits most important for identifying species can be measured remotely using high fidelity spectroscopy. These findings serve as the critical and highly sought basis for future airborne mapping activities. Just as the field program got underway with MacArthur support, another critical piece of the puzzle was funded by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation and William Hurst III. A new, more advanced instrument called a high-fidelity imaging spectrometer is under development for the CAO, with a planned launch of May 2011. Combined with a new CAO laser, the sensor package will form the Airborne Taxonomic Mapping System, or ATOMS. Atoms will boost the CAO sensitivity to the chemical information required to map forest health and diversity. Its new laser will image canopy structure, topography, and carbon with more than four times the information content of the current CAO system. The spectrometer is being built by partners at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL. We've been waiting for the opportunity to develop this class of imaging spectrometer for a long time. When Greg asked me if we would do it, I jumped at the opportunity. The CAO mission to explore, conserve, and manage ecosystems is exceptionally compelling. Our instrument development team came together with tremendous enthusiasm, ready to support this mission by building the most advanced imaging spectrometer on Earth. 
Carnegie's pathfinding science and JPL's unmatched imaging spectrometer expertise are already inspiring others to follow, and we haven't even had our first flight yet. Armed with a spectronomics database, the Atom sensor package, and a well-trained staff, the CAO team is ready to undertake the first generation of mapping flights. This last puzzle piece, to fly and to monitor carbon stocks, canopy health, and diversity, will focus scientific effort in key ecoregions with current and projected climate and land use change. These regions may include the Western Amazon, Caribbean, Mesoamerica, Madagascar, East Africa, and Southeast Asia. Carnegie's partnerships with government ministries, global NGOs, and regional conservation organizations will continue to help define the most pressing areas for CAO science applications. The CAO Spectronomics Program has the potential to deliver the first unequivocal information on the ecological outcomes of conservation investments and decisions at regional scales. To prepare, the CAO team recently selected a new aircraft with a larger payload capacity required for atoms and with a globally relevant range. The group is also developing ways to extend their computing reach, for example, by running Carnegie algorithms in the virtual cloud hosted by Google. We are entering a new scientific era, working with our partners to map, study, and report on changes occurring in the highest priority ecoregions on our planet. The science and conservation challenges are daunting, but advancing knowledge and increasing technical capacity among partners can have the greatest impact. With additional resources, we're ready to break the barrier with applications anywhere in the world.